My cam is live. My cam is live. <音樂>這個房子應該大的那邊 要講話,叫我裝啞吧。Well, let's do it now before I think. This is my colleague.
humble. She is humble. Sister Harima is a very humble person. So you were saying three words to describe Madam Halima, and now that you say humble, so you have to say the three words to describe Madam Halima. For three words, just the three words, huh? Repeating the question. Oh, I see. Okay. 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 She's very passionate in whatever she does. Thank you. Thank you so much. Really appreciate it. Oh, sorry. No problem. Oh, thank you. We have to give you back to all our interviewees. I'm going to be very sad. It's nomination day of the presidential election. The Straight Sense is coming to you live from the People's Association headquarters along King George's Avenue, the nomination centre for this year's presidential election. Now the election says to be a walkover as Madam Halima Yaakob was the only presidential hopeful to receive a certificate of eligibility. We're currently waiting for her arrival as she has to submit her nomination papers between 11am to 12 noon. As you can see behind us, a huge crowd of supporters have turned up in support of Madam Halima. And they're all decked out in orange and that's the colour of Halima's campaign which stands for unity. And all of them have been coming from various groups such as the grassroots constituencies as well as the labour movement and welfare organisations. They started streaming in about 10am when the nomination centre opened its doors. If all goes according to plan, Madam Halima will be Singapore's 8th president and our first female president. She has been the front runner since announcing that she will be running for the presidency several weeks ago. The other presidential hopefuls were Farid Khan, chairman of Bourbon Offshore Asia Pacific and Mr Saleh Mari Khan, Chief Executive of Second Chance Properties. Madam Halima was the only presidential hopeful to automatically qualify due to her position as Speaker of Parliament. That's right. Mr Farid and Mr Saleh are both from the private sector and both of them did not meet the minimum requirements for $500 million of private security, uh, equity. Also, with this being a one-horse race, it looks like September 23rd will not be polling day. And Madam Halima, as the President-elect tomorrow, should be sworn into office to mark the first day of a six-year term. And we are hearing reports that Madam Halima should be arriving shortly and we'll bring you those images very soon. So do stay tuned to our Facebook and YouTube pages for more live coverage and do log on to straightstime.com for more news coverage.
We have just heard that Madam Halima has left the NTUC Centre and is making her way towards the nomination centre. Now as you can see behind, crowds have gathered under these shelters since 10am this morning and it's a blazing heat with many armed with uh, umbrellas to protect themselves uh, from the sun. They are dressed in orange, the colour of unity and Madam Halima's campaign colour. There are groups from different organizations such as uh, welfare organizations as well as from her GRCs. Stay tuned and keep watching Straits Times live as we bring you live coverage of the Nomination Center on Facebook and YouTube. Oh, I don't know what I'm going to do. 
stadium lah. Oh, bukan tahun lepas, tahun ini main stadium. Stadium. Stadium teruk. Macam apa? Macam apa? Kita kena kena naik tangga. Naik tangga enam puluh step. Kita kena macam apa? Bayangkan itu yang kita yang pendek.
So we're coming to you outside the nomination hall live. And up until Monday, there was still a chance that there would be three presidential hopefuls walking through these doors. But as we all know, Madam Halima is the only one to automatically qualify, as she had served as Speaker of Parliament for more than three years. So Madam Halima and her team and her husband are inside right now filing their nomination papers. So while we wait, let's take a glimpse into Madam Halima's personal life. I felt very stressed up. <laughs> I almost fell off the chair. I thought I heard it wrongly the first time. So I didn't say anything. I said, maybe I heard it wrongly. Huh? Uh, then it was mentioned the second time. I almost, I almost fell off the chair. <laughs> I felt very stressed up. My mother at one point was working for a North Indian family. And that family has got one girl, same age as me. And that girl was registered in SCGS. I suspect that my mom said, OK, since you're registered, I don't know where to register you, me, so registered at the same school. That's why from primary 1 to primary 3, they offered only Mandarin oh. as a second language. Oh. So I studied Mandarin, but it was such a torture because there was no support, home environment support. Hmm. So I, I didn't have any support. So, But I wasn't the only kid. In primary 3, they then offered Tamil and Malay, and half the class I was the only Malay in the class, all the rest were Chinese kids. All half the class opted for Malay. And then, uh, of course, I became the most popular girl in class after that because I was the only one who came from a truly Malay speaking family. So I was happy. That was a big boost of confidence. <laughs> oh, I met him in the university. He was doing science, I was doing law. Of course, he pursued me that much. So how, how did you bump into each other? I was active in the Muslim society, so we sometimes organize events and he will attend. Uh, that's how we, you know, we bump into each other. Lah. And of course, he also played band. Lah. I never attend any of his jam sessions. Lah. Does right he with his jam serenade sessions. you on the guitar <laughs> sometimes? Oh, he doesn't do that then, but he does it now, lah, once in oh. a while. <laughs> when he's in the mood, lah, you know. Okay. When he gets some Hindustani song or some Malay song, you know. Uh, he will tell me that he knows how to sing this particular song. Uh, then he will try to, you know, perform. It's just that something clicks and then you say, okay lah, not bad lah. He proposed and then I accepted, you see. But the interesting thing is when he proposed, I told him, I'm prepared to accept your proposal, but you must agree once you have a house, I bring my mother along. So it comes as two in one. <laughs> Fortunately, he's able to handle that lah, because he doesn't see me as a power woman. <laughs> we balance up quite well lah, at home. Lah. Yeah. We, he, he does certain things, I do certain things, and we sort of balance up well. So as part of the nomination process, Madam Halema will need to submit her nomination papers as well as the certificate of eligibility and pay a deposit of $43,500. She also needs to turn up with a proposal, her seconder and at least four assenters. So Mr. Farid and Mr. Saleh, two other presidential hopefuls, were deemed ineligible to run on Monday. So this looks set to be a walkover. And let's take a look at what happened outside the elections department on Monday. Madam Halima collected her certificate of eligibility. Do stay tuned for more live coverage on our Facebook and YouTube page and do log on to straightsum.com for more news coverage. Well, the elections department has issued the certificate of eligibility to me. Uh, this paves the way for me to take part in the uh, presidential elections. I want to thank the uh, elections department for their hard work in processing our applications. Uh, and also the further clarifications that they had required from me. Well, uh, I will now focus on preparing for the nomination on the 13th, and that requires some work as well. Uh, I want to say that this has been, uh, you know, for me, I feel 
I have met many uh, Singaporeans over the last couple of weeks and I am really, I feel grateful for their support and encouragement. Thank you. Are you, are you worried about public perception now that there isn't an election, so to speak? Well, uh, it is, uh, you know, I can only say that I promise to do the best that I can to serve the people of Singapore. And that doesn't change whether there is an election or no election. Whether there is an election or no election, my passion and commitment to serve the people of Singapore remains the same. I remain fully committed to serve Singaporeans and Singapore. And Madam, given the many dividing views regarding um, the reserved election, actually how do you plan to unite the nation uh, given your upcoming role as the President? One of the main focus and function of the President, elected President, is to act as a unifying force. Obviously, there's uh, work that I have to do, but the most important thing for me is to, I would like to encourage, I would like uh, Singaporeans to work together with me so that we can work together for a united Singapore and much stronger Singapore. Uh, this is a journey that we must take together and I want to invite all Singaporeans to come together to work with me, build a stronger Singapore, a better Singapore for future generations. Uh, we, I, we understand that you're a president, you're going to be a president for all Singaporeans, but what does the reserved presidency mean for Malay community? Well, I think uh, the reserve election, the reasons for the reserve election has already been elaborated quite extensively, debated also quite extensively. The reasons, reason, don't, I'm not going to go through that again. But uh, once elected, the president, the process may be a reserve election, but the president is for everyone, for all communities, see, whether it is regardless of the race and the religion. So I think that is a very important point. The uh, president, once elected, represents all races, all religions, all communities in Singapore. Madam, will you push or support for a referendum to get the moral authority required to stand up against a government that was popularly voted? Well, I, uh, I think I have covered all the questions, all the questions that you, you have asked pertinent to this. Please remember, I have not submitted my nominations. I have to submit my nominations on Wednesday, eh? my nomination to take part in the election. So uh, after the nomination has been submitted, uh, there will be a press conference and I will answer all the questions further. Thank you very much. Thank you much, very much. Thank, thank, you. Thank, you. Thank, you. thank you. Thank you. Thank you.
Can you bring it closer? Can you bring it closer? Yeah, bring the release box closer, okay? Yeah, we take picture first. Uh. Madam Halima's papers have already been pasted on the notice board and we can expect the returning officer to approach the stage any moment now to announce Madam Halima as president-elect. This will be followed by her speech as she will address her supporters here. Now the supporters have been waiting patiently under the sun, many of them armed with banners, placards and flowers. Stay tuned to The Straits Times for our live coverage on Nomination Day on Facebook, YouTube and StraitsTimes.com. Okay. 
So the nomination papers are already up on the notice board and there are six forms on that notice board. Some of that include the community certificate as well as the certificate of eligibility. As we all know, Madam Palema is the only one eligible to run, so there's only one name on that notice board. She had been inside the hall for like about 15 minutes before she came out. And now we are expecting the returning officer to come out, Mr Ng Wai Chung, who's the Chief Executive of Energy Market Authority, who will make a formal announcement.
é paisano, é paisano. Boa, boa.
Presidential election 2017. Result of nominations. Madam Halima Yaakob is the only candidate who has been nominated. I declare Madam Halima Yaakob as the candidate elected to the office of President of the Republic of Singapore. I will now invite Madam Halima Yaakob to address her supporters. Good afternoon. Tatia Chongu Hao. Selamat tengah hari. Vanakam. First of all, I would like to thank all my supporters who are present here today. I really feel very appreciated and I, I'm uh, deeply grateful to all of you for your presence here today members of the, from the trade unions, uh, community groups, religious groups, and also members of the public. I know that you've been waiting here for a few hours and it's really very hot under the hot sun. So, so <laughs> thank you, thank you. I'm uh, really very grateful to you because you've taken time off from your work and uh, really, uh, really made the effort to come here all the way. I'm really grateful. Let me first of all like uh, say that I want to, from the bottom of my heart, I want to say a very big thank you to all Singaporeans for your support, your encouragement, and your well wishes. For the, over the last two weeks, I've been walking the ground 
very extensively. I've met many Singaporeans from all backgrounds, young, old, in many, many places. I've spoken to them. And I'm so heartened, I'm so really very, very grateful for their well wishes, their encouragement, and their support. Many of you uh, not only gave words of encouragement and support, many of you came to pat me on the back. Many of you also hugged me, you know, and many of you told me that you will support me even without my asking or saying anything. So that tremendously warmed my heart, and that also made my journey here to this nomination center all the more pleasant, warm, and most encouraging. So once again, thank you to all Singaporeans. Thank you, Singaporeans. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you all Singaporeans for your support. I feel really I feel really very blessed as I start my journey. I know that some have some doubts about the reserve election and I want to tell you as your president elect I promise to work with everyone. I am president for everyone and I intend to serve all without any hesitation or doubt. I also want to tell you that although this is a reserved election, I am not a reserved president. <laughs> President for everyone. Regardless of race, language, religion, or creed, I represent everyone. My duty remains only to Singapore and Singaporeans. And my duty remains only to you. Although there is no election, my commitment to, to, to serve you remains the same. There is no diminution, even one bit, of my desire, passion, commitment to serve you. In fact, my resolve to work hard, to work tireless, tirelessly and with great sincerity is even greater. These are values which I hold very dear to me when I perform my public duties, my public service, and I will do it even, and it means even greater to me now that I have become your president-elect. Well, I also stand before you as the second Malay president in the 47 years of our history. I believe that this is a proud moment for Singapore. This is a proud moment for multiculturalism, multiracialism in our society. This shows that multiracialism is not just a slogan, something that is good for us to say, for people to hear, but it means that it really works in our society, that everyone has a chance to reach the highest office of the land. And this is not just good for now, but it's also good for generations to come, because it shows very positively how Singapore practices multiracialism. I also stand before you as the first female president of Singapore. I can see that many of our sisters here are delighted. 
and I delight with you because it shows that this is not just tokenism, that when we talk about gender diversity, we are just not chanting slogans again, but we really mean it. Every woman. Every woman can aspire to the highest office of the land if you have the courage, the determination, and the will to work hard. Before I proceed, let me just say a few words in Malay. Saya ingin mengucapkan ribuan terima kasih kepada anda sekalian yang berada di sini. Saya tahu bahawa ramai daripada anda telah berada di sini berjam-jam di bawah panas terik. <laughs> Dan ini tentu sekali menunjukkan betapa banyak sokongannya yang anda berikan kepada saya. <laughs> saya selama dua minggu telah Terima kasih. Saya selama <laughs> selama dua minggu kebelakang ini, kebelakangan ini saya telah banyak berjumpa penduduk-penduduk Singapura dari berbagai latar belakang, dari usia muda, usia uh, uh, emas, dari warga emas, dari semua latar belakang dan banyak juga sokongan yang telah saya terima ramai yang memeluk saya, yang memberikan saya kata-kata perangsang yang mengatakan bahawa mereka akan menyokong saya tanpa uh, saya meminta sokongan mereka. Saya berasa amat bersyukur. Terima kasih saya ucapkan kepada semua warga Singapura. Sokongan yang telah anda berikan membuatkan perjalanan saya ke pusat nomination ini, ini begitu mudah. Jadi terima kasih sekali lagi. Saya merupakan presiden kedua, presiden Melayu kedua dalam 47 tahun sejarah kita di Singapura. Presiden pertama merupakan presiden Yusof Ishak dan saya merupakan presiden kedua. Saya rasa ini menunjukkan bahawa di Singapura, kita memberi peluang kepada semua, tidak kira bangsa atau agama. Dan ini adalah suatu contoh yang baik bagi Singapura. Ia menunjukkan bahawa jika diberi peluang, jika ada sokongan, tidak kira apa saja bangsa kita, kita dapat menyapai ke taraf yang kita kehendaki. Insya Allah. Saya juga merupakan presiden wanita pertama di Singapura. Dan saya rasa tentu sekali ramai di kalangan wanita kita merasakan gembira pada masa yang sama yang menunjukkan bahawa wanita boleh meningkat ke mana saja taraf, ke mana saja kedudukan selagi mereka mempunyai kemahuan, selagi mereka diberi peluang. Ini juga sesuatu yang saya rasa adalah satu prinsip yang baik bagi negara kita, negara Singapura yang kita sayangi. Biarlah saya teruskan dalam bahasa Inggeris, tetapi saya ingin berakhir ucapan dalam bahasa Melayu dengan mengatakan bahawa masa untuk memilih presiden telah berakhir dan sekarang adalah masa untuk kita sama-sama memusatkan fokus kita kepada bagaimana untuk membina Singapura supaya ia menjadi sebuah masyarakat yang lebih maju yang dapat memberikan lebih banyak kepada meningkatkan taraf kehidupan rakyat kita. Dan kita harus bekerja sama dalam usaha ini. Tidak ada se seorang pun yang boleh katakan mereka dapat lakukannya sendiri. Kita perlukan kerjasama semua rakyat 
dan saya berharap dapat mendapatkan sokongan kerjasama anda sekalian dalam usaha kita sama-sama meningkatkan, memajukan negara Singapura yang kita sayangi ini. Terima kasih. Let me now proceed in my concluding paragraphs in English. I want to say, dear Singaporeans, dear Singaporeans, dear Singaporeans, we have a lot of work to do together. We know, and many of you here who are workers, you know, we have both internal challenges and external challenges that we need to overcome. I ask you now, dear Singaporeans, that the election is over, to stand together so that we can focus on our core priorities to ensure that Singapore remains a great home for everyone. <laughs> dear Singaporeans, no one person or persons can achieve this task. We need every Singaporean to stand together, shoulder to shoulder, to achieve for ourselves the best that we can be. We have not reached the peak yet. Do you think we have reached the peak? No. We have not reached the peak yet. The best is yet to come. But the best can only be achieved we work together so that we can go on improving the, our lives and that of our children. I ask that you focus on the similarities that we have and not on our differences. Wow. I ask that you focus on the similarities that we have and not on the differences. In 1965, when we became independent, no one thought that we could survive. But look at us today. Look at us today. We are Singaporeans. We are in a country that we are really proud of. We have come a long way, but we have an equally long way ahead of us. No one owes us a living. We owe it to ourselves to build a great nation that we all can be proud of and that we can hand over to our children and grandchildren with great pride. Yes. We must stay united. We must beat with one heart. We must move in one direction. I am deeply humbled to be given this opportunity to serve all of you. I look forward to working very closely with you. And I believe that we can do good together. We can do good together. We can do good together. And I invite you to do good together with me. Thank you very much. Terima kasih, Ruman Dandri, Sese. Thank you.
Are you stuck? 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 Are you stuck?
So there you have it, Madam Halima has officially been announced as president-elect. As part of her speech, she mentioned that although this is a reserved election, she is not a reserved president and called for Singaporeans to look at the similarities and not the differences. As you can see, the field has cleared as supporters are slowly streaming out. We're currently awaiting for a media doorstop at the nomination centre behind me. Stay tuned to our live coverage. Congratulations. 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 Some more? I'm sweating already. <laughs> okay. So who shall I look at? Just look at both of us. Both of you. Okay. Yeah. Could you maybe share with us your thoughts, your feelings now that you're president-elect? Well, I'm uh, very glad that the nomination process went very smoothly and that uh, we have completed it. Uh, the immediate priority is of course to start working. I intend to, to start work immediately. Uh, and you know, if I said uh, my uh, campaign slogan was, I want to invite all Singaporeans to do good and do it together. 
I think that's really very important because everybody, everyone has a role to play. I am really deeply, deeply heartened by the tremendous support from Singaporeans, many of whom came to uh, wait for me at this nomination centre. They've been here for many hours and it was really hot as you can see, but yet they waited. And so I feel so grateful to them. Um, as I said, I've been uh, walking the ground for the last more than two weeks, very extensively, engaging different groups of people, young, old, from different backgrounds, and the support has been very encouraging. I feel really very energized and motivated by the support and encouragement that they've given to me. Uh, so I will start working immediately, that's my promise. And as I said, although this is a reserve election, I am not a reserve president. I'm a president for everyone, young, old, different races, different religions, all creed, very important to me. Madam Halima, there have been frustrations uh, over the reserve election and over the walkover and there's been the hashtag, you know, not my president going around on social media. You know, what are your comments to this? How do you plan to unify the, the uh, Singaporeans at large? Well, I, uh, whether it is uh, there is an election or no election, my promise is to really serve everyone. And then I will serve with uh, great vigour, with a lot of hard work, with the same passion and commitment that I have served people for the last four decades. And uh, I think people, after this election, I want to invite Singaporeans to focus on our priorities. As I mentioned just now, this is not, uh, we have a lot of challenges. We should start focusing on those challenges, those priorities, uh, you know, domestically, internationally. So those should be our priorities and we need to work together. This is not something that only uh, one person or several persons uh, can do, but everyone has a role to play. Madam, yeah. what will but be your central message uh, in your swearing-in speech tomorrow? My central message will the, to be focused on the core values that is of immense importance to Singapore and which has brought us from where we were previously in 1965 to where we are now today. The core values of uh, multiracialism, of, uh, you know, of... Uh, meritocracy. So I will talk about the core values, those which are dear to me as well. Yeah. Madam, um, everyone is very concerned where will you be staying after <laughs> this. So what will happen Should to your plan in Kishun? <laughs> Should be, uh, you all never get, never got over that. Huh? <laughs> well, I'm still staying in Kishun as you can see. Uh, I, I, there were a lot of journalists just now also, you know, waiting for me at, on the ground floor. They were there yesterday also. So they all know that I'm still staying there. Madam President, the job of the president can be challenging uh, mentally and physically. Right, Could yeah. Could you to share the status of your health and how do you plan to keep healthy oh, so that Oh, my status of my health uh, is still... Responsible. Uh, Inshallah, uh, Alhamdulillah, my status of my health is very good. Every morning I exercise at least 45 minutes. I don't have to go into the details, I don't need that. So, well, every morning I exercise and I live on the sixth floor. And when I come back from work, I climb up the six floors. If I have time, I also climb down. So I try to avoid taking the staircase. Chalima. That has served me well. Yeah. And I think the standing grounds is very is very big, so that gives me a chance to walk around and exercise further and keep myself fit. Rancangan utama saya telah pun saya lakarkan dengan pasukan saya, yaitu saya akan teruskan usaha saya mendampingi rakyat. Jadi ada beberapa kegiatan yang setelah pun dirancangkan. InsyaAllah. Apakah keutamaan anda? Keutamaan, keutamaan saya adalah untuk memberikan keyakinan kepada rakyat kita. Keyakinan bahawa saya masih memikirkan tentang kebajikan mereka dan akan terus mengambil langkah-langkah untuk melihat bagaimana kita dapat sama-sama meningkatkan prestasi Singapura dan rakyat Singapura. Thank you very much. After you are elected, will you be moving to the Istana? After you are... Um... No, I won't. I just uh, mentioned to Shiobi. Uh, she's very interested in where I'm living. So I told her that I'm still living in Yishun. But yeah. everyone is keen to find out will you be there forever? <laughs> well, you know, I Can mean... I say <laughs> Actually, our house is a two and five room and four room together. It's as huge as a penthouse. It's big. So most people thought it's just... A small five room, you know. Okay, oh, right. But so we, we, yeah, I think. But security issues. Security so will. Uh, security issues. I will leave it to the security department. I think they know how to secure the area. Uh, 
but I think it's a very nice, comfortable place. Uh, I've been living there for many years. Boleh ada ulas dalam bahasa Melayu? Tentang apa? Uh, tempat kediaman saya adalah sesuatu yang uh, selesa bagi saya. Saya telah pun uh, tinggal di rumah tersebut untuk beberapa dekad dan saya rasa jika tidak ada isu-isu keselamatan dapatlah saya terus tinggal dalam uh, tempat kediaman saya. Yeah. Thank you very much. Sorry, my brother. My brother engagement. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. You know, when you are in public service, you focus on your goals, your objectives. And you focus on the people you want to serve. That has, has always been my motto. I focus on the people I want to serve. I focus on how to improve their lives, whether by introducing programs or helping them, you know, and that will continue to be my emphasis. So I think uh, that answers your question. Thank, thank you very much. much. Thank, thank, you. Thank, thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. So Madam Halima has officially been announced as President-elect. She will be Singapore's 8th President and 1st Female President. Madam Halima will be sworn in tomorrow to begin her 6th year term. Thanks for following our live coverage on Straits Times. And as always, do log on to straitstimes.com for more stories.